look at some other webcams if we want here. We've got, uh, oh, here's the Brooklyn Bridge. It's kind of fun to keep tabs on things, you know. Here's the Golden Gate Bridge. I think there's one for, yeah, this was, uh, this is, I think, this is Times Square in New York. And uh, so I can get these widgets, whether it's a calculator that I need, or I want to play some music, or I want to check on some stocks, and boom, they're gone instantly, which is as important as they're coming instantly. So let me go ahead and just show you this again in slow motion. <laughs> and then, gone instantly. And so when you need something, boom, check on it, use it, boom, it's gone. Little things like, you know, clocks that we can set for, you know, any time zone we want here. You know, Miami. <clears throat> you name it, we can do it. So, this is Dashboard. Okay. <laughs> so in Dashboard, the widgets instantly appear just as importantly, they instantly disappear. Because when you're done using them, you want to get back to what you were doing. There's accessory widgets. There's widgets that go out on the web and find information for you. And again, they're all built using WebKit. Here's just some high-res versions so you can see what they look like. We'll be working on these some more. We'll supply a set. But what we really want is for you guys to start supplying these things. They're very easy to code and they're fun. So it's totally extensible. And we're putting an SDK in your hands today. So you can write your own widgets. And that is Dashboard. Once we had Expose done, we knew what we had to do next. Next up is a really, really cool app that I know I'm going to be using a lot of called Automator. What is Automator? Automator is visual scripting. You know, we've had Apple Script. We have the best scripting in the land. But you have to learn Apple Script to use it. And our AppleScript team said, let's take this even further and do visual scripting. You can build interactive or fully automated scripts. Over 100 actions are built in. You can share scripts. You can send around files. You can email them. They work just fine. And Automator has access to iLife and Mail and Safari and every app in the system and Quartz. So you can do some amazing, amazing things. And I'd like to invite Saul up on the, up on the stage, whom you all know, to give us a demo of Automator. Thanks, well, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. How are you doing? I'm thrilled to be here today to show you this innovative, groundbreaking application. Automator has already made my life so much simpler in many ways. For example, every year I make a DVD that my family gives out as a Christmas gift. Now, the contents of this DVD are the slideshows containing the images from websites that I've downloaded that belong to my family members. For example, my Uncle Ray has a website up on .Mac where he keeps images from the family events of the last year, like Ted and Trina's wedding, uh, Carrie D's trip to Disneyland, and pictures of his grandchildren, Sam and Emma. Now, these pictures are really good and would be perfect for me to add into my DVD, but the problem with getting pictures from the internet is that you have to take them, download them to your desktop, drag them down there, go to the next picture, do the same kind of thing. And you have to sort them, collect them, put them together, then add them to your DVD project. Now, Automator can make this process so much simpler. Let me show you how. Let me close this. And this is Automator. It has a very simple, easy to use interface. On the left-hand side are icon buttons representing the categories of the things that you do most on the computer. For example, finding things, working with disk items, or opening drives, some music things, working with people. And as you click a category, you'll notice that the actions related to that category appear in a list below the category buttons. Now, for my particular workflow that I'm working on, I'm dealing with the internet. So I'll click the internet category and choose an action called find linked images. Now as you can see in the description field for this particular action, it will go to the web page that's showing in your Safari browser and find the larger images that are linked to those smaller thumbnails. 
So to add this to my workflow, I'll just select the action, drag it up into the workflow area, and it's automatically added, and any preferences that that action has appear here. The next step in my workflow process will be to download the, the files that are found by this action, and I'll choose the download internet files action and drag that in as well. And instantly you can see that these two actions are linked together so that the result of the first action is passed to the second action automatically. And for the options on this action, I have the choice of determining where I'm going to place those downloaded images. And for this example, I'm going to choose my pictures folder. Now that I've downloaded the images to my hard drive, the next step is I'd like to add them to my iPhoto library so that I could use them again in other projects. I'll click the pictures category and then choose import images into iPhoto. And as an option, I can make a new album for these imported images and I'll name that album Sam and Emma. And I can choose to delete the downloaded images because iPhoto keeps its own copy. All right. And then the next step, of course, is to add them into iDVD and I'll choose new DVD slideshow add that to my workflow, and I can name the slideshow the same thing, Sam and Emma, and I can even set parameters for my slideshow like three second slide duration and a cube effect as well. So there's my workflow. Find the images on the website, download them to my hard drive, import them into iPhoto, and then finally create a new slideshow in iDVD and add those images into it. Now to execute this workflow, all I have to do is click the run button here and instantly Automator will go through the processes that you've seen. It will download the images to my hard drive, import them into iPhoto, create a new album for them. Then switch to iDVD and add it in. It's that simple. It really is. Everybody can do this. But here's the best part about the whole thing. This is what I really like. Is I've got a great workflow here. I can use this workflow every time I go to a different website to get the images. Well, with Automator, I can save that workflow as a document and share it with other people, or I can save it and use it with the applications on my computer, like Safari. So I'll switch back to Automator. And I'll make this workflow more generic by instead of placing a specific name, I'll have the workflow ask me for the name of the iPhoto album and ask me for the name of the iDVD slideshow. Now I can save this workflow and have it appear in Safari whenever I need it. I'll choose Build DVD and choose Safari from my list here. And now I have completed the saving of the workflow. I can quit Automator, go back to Safari, and let's go to another page. Oh, these are great pictures of Sam and Emma at the beach. And up in my script menu, you'll now see the workflow that I just created called Build DVD. I select that, and you can see that there's a visual indicator running showing me that the workflow is in process. It is now downloaded and imported the images. I can name the, oh, at the beach. <laughs> I can name my album that. Select all. Switch to iDVD. And now ask me for the name of the slideshow. I'll use the same name. So Automator has done all the hard work. All I have to do now is preview the DVD.